Something very cool has just arrived in the post all the way from Russia. Right, this is the headlamp pod from a Ural motorcycle made in the 50s. I bought this because um, although Harley Davidson made something similar in the 50s um, they are very expensive now whereas this is more reasonably priced. Um, I wanted to put all my electronics for the self-balancing into the pod behind the headlamp so getting one with the speedo built into the pod and if you can see an elongated pod gives me the chance to do that. It's also got some great lights on the top, switches uh, what have we done? About 9,700 kilometres. Um, probably can't see this, but on the glass here, it's got uh, CCP. There you are, CCP. And um, there's a 53, so I don't know if it was made in 53, but uh, it looks like it may have been. Right, I've just been um, test fitting all the main parts to the new frame. As you can see, we've got the new uh, rocket style upper bodywork on. There'll be a curved narrow saddle all the way along here. And we've got the chopper handlebars, which hinge underneath. Uh, we've got the steering linkage, which runs off the handlebars to the back tucked in super snug to the main fuselage. This is all batteries um, and we've got our sort of jet intake thing at the front which looks pretty good and the rounded tail here there with the green light in it. So I've undone the steering linkage from here and we've undone these two top bolts so this should slide out now. There we go. So that's the entire steering system removed. See there's nothing now stopping the battery pack from coming out. The whole thing slides out from the front. So here I've partially removed the battery. I'm just, I can't do this and film at the same time so we'll just do it in sequence. Um, you can see how it's shaped to exactly fit the tube, the groove in the top to allow for that spar down the centre. The battery is now completely removed and it's uh, back on the bench safely. This is the full thing, you see I've got a protective plate at the rear. Um, it's all strung together with threaded rod and aluminium tube and it's a cylinder. So here is my broken, yes, adequately labelled uh, battery management system and uh, I don't know if you can see there's a, a row of, there you are, 20 odd pins there and they go to the junctions between each cell of the battery pack. It comes with a, a sort of diagram like this okay. and so to test it you wire up the um, your main um, charger connection negative uh, power out negative uh, battery negative to there and then you work your way along you put your um, the black wire if you like of your multimeter into this pin of the um, the, the uh, plugs that you will have uh, soldered at, you know, t to each battery junction and then you work your way along with the positive the wire of your multimeter and it should go up in steps of about 3.3 volts. So the negative wire of my multimeter is in the, uh, the first connects to the first wire which goes to battery negative and we're now got the positive wire of the multimeter in the first in the line of pins here and it's reading 3.3 volts so the next thing is to move along to the next position so now I've moved this pin to the next position along and it's reading 6.6 .6 volts 
and so if I leave this one where it is, battery negative, and work my way along all the way along, they should go up in increments of about 3.3 .3 volts all the way to the end. Right, well the good news is I've plugged them in and nothing's gone bang, nothing's getting hot and smoke is not coming out so that's an improvement on last time. This is the contactor on a uh, custom made bracket uh, which will slide in here. It's basically a massive relay, a um, little bit hard to get um, because it's rated at about 100, 120 amps. Um, it's designed for, it's not quite big enough for an electric car and uh, it's, it's more appropriate for an electric motorcycle. So. Um, and yet it's a bit too big for say a robot so uh, I, anyway this this is uh, about right for the job I think and I'll put a link to it on my website so here's my uh, main positive feed going through the giant relay or contactor uh, we have a 10k ohm uh, wire wound resistor um, which I presumably can get hot sometimes um, the idea of that is it allows the um, big smoothing capacitors in the Kelly controller at the rear of the machine to uh, slowly charge up um, so that when you connect the power properly with the contactor um, you don't get a massive current slamming through as it charges up the capacitors. The idea is that they remain fully charged all the time. You could argue that this would drain the batteries but the idea is that it's like a reservoir once the capacitors are full they're full and no more current will flow um, unless there's a fault. So that's that. Then on the side here, these are the contacts for the coil of the contactor which will um, um, energize it when I turn the ignition key. The ignition key is, is, is one of these normal, I don't know if you can see that there. Um, you, you can buy them from electronic shops and I managed to fit it through the hole that the original Russian key system was mounted through with this rather weird uh, but rather cool cover plate over it. So that's quite neat. So briefly, um, the way this system in here works is um, I've got my PA, PID control uh, potentiometers, overall gain, um, a device for removing the dead spot in the middle from, that the Kelly controller has, uh, an on-off switch, there's actually a three pole single throw switch um, that turns on the Arduino which for now runs from a little battery pack of AA batteries I just like a nice smooth separate supply for my balancing software at least initially till I'm confident everything's working um, by taking the uh, lens off the uh, this the motorcycle lens off um, it gives me access to all the electronics, it gives me access to the programming port of the Arduino Mega that's sitting in there. There's a, you can see down here, SparkFun IMU there. Uh, there's my little voltage um, pulse width modulation to um, voltage um, changer thing. Uh, what else about it? Uh, this box under here which isn't properly mounted yet that converts uh, 70 odd volts from the battery pack to 12 volts um, which is then fed to the ignition switch and then goes to the coil of the contactor you can't see it but between these two there's a huge flyback diode which stops um, as, as the magnetic field in the coil decays when you uh, turn the switch off it um, produces a really high voltage as the magnetic um, as the magnetic field decays, and that that can short everything out. So the way you get around that is with a diode. Everything's wired up and tidied up. You might be able to hear the uh, the contactor clicking now. So if we turn on the power and then turn the key, we should hear a click. Okay, click on, click off. Good.